we were discussing the power diodes with the different type of loads. We have already covered the diode switched RL load, but what will be the role of the free wheeling diodes in the RL load that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So here in this circuit, we have a diode. The load is basically the RL load. That is a combination of resistance and inductance. The source that we are applying is basically a DC source, which is connected with the help of a switch. And the switch is closed at time t equal to zero so that the current flows in the network. Now, when diode is connected in parallel with the main load, this diode is known as the free wheeling diode. So we can see that in this circuit, when the switch will closed, the current will flow only in the load. It cannot go through the free wheeling diode because the diode will block the current in the forward bias condition. However, in the reverse bias condition, the current can flow from this free wheeling diode. So we will see the operation of the free wheeling diode. So when the switch S1 is closed at particular time, that is T1, a current will start flowing through the load. So the current will flow through the load. Now, when the switch is opened, suppose this switch is opened, a path must be provided for the current in the inductive load to prevent high voltage induction. As the inductor has the ability to store the energy in the magnetic field where you have the current stored here in the inductor. So this energy has to be dissipated to prevent the high voltage induction and hence the path is given through the free wheeling diode. So to mitigate the induction effect, the diode DM, which is commonly known as the free wheeling diode, is typically connected. This is connected in parallel with the main load, which is the RN load. The diode DM facilitates a path for the inductive load current to avoid the voltage spikes. So whatever the energy is stored in this inductor, it will the diode will provide the path for that inductive energy to dissipate to avoid any voltage spike in the circuit. The diode D1 is in series with the switch. Now here, this is the main diode which is in series with the switch to prevent the negative current flow in the presence of AC input. Suppose the input we give to be AC, then for the negative half cycle, you will not have any current flowing here. Only in the positive half cycle, the current will flow. In DC supply scenarios, this D1 is unnecessary. So we don't require any diode when the supply is basically the DC source. S1 in conjunction with diode, here uh, the switch in conjunction with diode mimics the behavior of an electronic switch. When we say electronic switch, it is in the form of BJT, IGBT, MOSFET, etc. So time t equal to zero plus means the switch is closed at time t equal to zero and any time after that, the switch is closed and the current is zero. Because just after the switch is closed, there will be no current in the circuit. In the absence of inductor, the current would rise instantaneously. Suppose there is no inductor in the network and the switch is closed, then the current will start flowing and in a very fast rate. Due to the inductor, the current will rise exponentially with the initial slope of Vs by L. So this we have seen uh, during the discussion of the RL load with a diode in the absence of the free wheeling diode. The circuit operation is basically divided into two important modes. Mode one, where it begins with the switch is closed at time t equal to zero. So here the switch is closed, that is the mode one. And mode two, when the switch is opened. So again, the switch will be opened, that is the mode two. So let us see these two modes. Uh, the current I1, which is flowing in one of the circuit, that is in the mode one, and the current I2 are the instantaneous current for the mode 1 and mode 2. So current I2 will be flowing in the mode 2. In the mode 1, the switch is closed. So you have the RL load along with the source. In the mode 2, there is no source because the switch is open. So T1 and T2 represent the duration of these modes. So the total time duration of mode 1 is T1. The total time duration of mode 2 is T2. Let us see the mode 1. At the end of this mode, what will happen? The current I1, which is the current flowing at time t equal to t1, because here the switch is closed, the current equation will be Vs by R, 1 minus e to the power minus t R by L. The derivation of this we have seen already when we have discussed the RL law. So here we can see that the current I1, which is reached at a particular time, 
and the current I1 is increasing exponentially here. And then if T1 is sufficiently long, the I1 will reach the steady state bed. Means the duration T1, if it is sufficiently long, this current will obviously reach the steady state value, which is a capital I1. The steady state current is basically given by Vs by R. So here, the current which is in the steady state, this current will be equal to Vs by R and that will flow through the load. And the total time duration is basically given by T1. So here the time T1 will be there. For the mode 2, this is the mode 2 where the switch is opened and the load current will flow through the free willing diode. So when the switch is opened, then the current starts flow, flowing from the free willing diode. The current through this free willing diode can be determined by using the KVL equation in this loop. So you don't have a source, so that is zero. The voltage drop across this inductor will be LDI2 by DT and the Ohm's law for this register power drop will be, voltage drop will be I2 into R. So the solution to this I2 of T will be equal to I1 e to the power minus T R by L. Note here, this current I1 is coming from the mode 1 because after time T1, the current present in the inductor is I1 which is driving the network. So the current I2 at time t equal to 0 is basically I1. This is coming from the mode Y. At time t equal to T2, now if we see this time, T2 time, this current starts to decay exponentially towards 0. So the current now we start flowing exponentially in a decreasing order and will reach to 0. This decay occurs because the time T2 is very, very greater than N by R. Let us solve one problem to understand the free wheeling diode equations. So the source voltage is a DC voltage 220 volt. There is no resistance in the network. So you do not have any drop. The inductor value is 220 micro Henry. Draw the load current waveform. If the switch is closed at a time T1, 100 microsecond and then opened, determine the final energy which is stored in the load inductor. So here the switch is closed for a time 100 microsecond. So what would be the current? Current will be equal to Vs by N into time T and for a time T1, the current will be Vs T1 by L. So we substitute the value of the source voltage 200 and the time T1, which is 100 microsecond, and the inductor value is 220 micro Henry. So that gives to be 100 ampere. So 100 ampere is basically the steady state current and the total energy, which is the formula of half L I square. Initial, in initial current is basically 100, which is present in the system when the switch is closed and opened. So that will give you 1.1 joule as the net energy present in the system. So initially this current will increase since there is no resistance in the network. It is increasing in a linear fashion and then the steady state is reached. So this is at time T1 and the maximum value of the current is Vs by L into T1. And after T1, if you see the current become constant and this current is flowing through the free willing diode. So this covers the lecture of free wheeling diode with RL load. Uh, go back and see the RL load if you have not watched that, how the diode with RL functions and then what is the role of the free wheeling diode. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you for now.